Hey guys, welcome to Season of Dawn. Today I'll be going over the brand new Sundial weapons and the Season Pass weapons and covering the perks that can roll on them, as well as getting you familiar with all of the new perks introduced in this season. There's also a bunch of Year 1 weapons that got refreshed with new perks, things like Uriel's Gift, The Old Fashioned, The Last Hope, Hawthorne's Fieldforge Shotgun, are these bringing back bad memories of Year 1 yet? And on top of those, three of the Prophecy weapons from the Curse of Osiris DLC were also updated for Year 3. I'm not sure if these are the only three available or if they'll be more revealed over time, but right now we only have the info on three of them, which I will cover after I get through the new season's weapons. As for the three new Ritual weapons, we'll cover those in a separate video. Let's start with the weapons included in the Season of Dawn Collections badge. All of these will likely come from the Sundial activity itself. I'll probably make a separate video talking about this whole reward system and how it works in the near future. So first up is the Steel Feather Repeater, a 720 RPM kinetic auto rifle. In this final column, which I'll only be talking about the third and fourth columns of the weapons, this weapon can roll with some brand new perks from Season of Dawn as well as some old ones. First we've got Surrounded, then Elemental Capacitor, which is a brand new perk, which increases the weapon's stats based on the subclass that you're running. So if you have a solar subclass equipped, you'll get a faster reload. With arc, you get better handling, and void, you get higher stability. That's actually a pretty creative perk. This auto can also roll with Swashbuckler, which is a fantastic perk. And we've also got another perk here called Osmosis. This one says that using your grenade ability changes this weapon's damage type to match the subclass that you're running until you stow it, which sounds really cool. This weapon can also roll with Multi-Kill Clip, which is another great perk. And lastly, we've got another new one called Vorpal Weapon, which increases this weapon's damage against vehicles, bosses, and guardians while their super is active. Kind of sounds like that mod that you can equip on weapons. This might be cool on a special or power weapon, meaning you don't have to actually use that boss spec mod, allowing you to use something like backup mod, but I am very curious to see if this is worth it for a PvP role. You can already take down a super pretty easily if you are team shooting them. This one might make it a lot easier to do solo, but we'll have to see. In the column before that, the Steel Feather Repeater can roll with Grave Robber, Subsistence, Ambitious Assassin, Slideways, Feeding Frenzy, and Moving Target. Next up on our list is Patron of Lost Causes, a 200 RPM kinetic scout rifle. In the last column, it can roll with Opening Shot, Elemental Capacitor, Vorpal Weapon, Under Pressure, Osmosis, and finally Explosive Payload. Patron of Lost Causes' third column of perks consists of the following, Mulligan, Grave Robber, Rapid Hit, Underdog, Field Prep, and Full Auto Trigger System. Explosive Payload, actually a pretty good perk. Next up we have Breach Light, which is a 325 RPM kinetic sidearm. In its final column, it can roll with Elemental Capacitor, Rampage, Vorpal Weapon, Quick Draw, Osmosis, and Multi-Kill Clip. Its third column can roll with Underdog, Demolitionist, Outlaw, Under Pressure, Threat Detector, or Hit Fire Grip. Sidearms got a little bit of a buff in the patch notes. It says increased target acquisition across the board. This might make sidearms a little bit easier to use. However, I'm not sure how many more people will choose to run a sidearm even with that additional buff. Next up is Martyr's Retribution, a 90 RPM energy grenade launcher. In the final column, we're looking at the perks Elemental Capacitor, Moving Target, Range Finder, Demolitionist, and a new perk called Lead from Gold, where picking up heavy ammo also grants ammo to this weapon. As a grenade launcher, that means free special ammo every time you pick up a brick of heavy, and that sounds awesome. This thing can also come with auto-loading holster, field prep, threat detector, genesis, and underdog in the second to last column. Gallant Charge is our next specimen here, an energy fusion rifle that starts out with a charge time of 860. In its last column, here's what perks we're looking at. Lead from gold, Range Finder, Tap the Trigger, Swashbuckler, Rampage, and Multi-Kill Clip. Lots of good damage perks there, this is going to be a pretty great fusion. Its third column has Grave Robber, Demolitionist, Auto-Loading Holster, Hip Fire Grip, and No Distractions. I can't recall any other fusions that can actually roll with No Distractions or Swashbuckler, so unless my memory is just failing me right now, that's actually pretty unique. 
Our last sundial weapon here is called Line in the Sand. It's a power weapon, a linear fusion with a base charge time of 533. This one has some really nice perks for a linear fusion, which by the way, linear fusions just got their precision damage buffed by 20%. Line in the Sand's last column consists of the following. Rampage, Firing Line, which is the first time a linear fusion's gotten that perk. Then we have a returning Destiny 1 perk, Clown Cartridge where reloading this weapon has a random chance to overfill it from the reserves. Basically, it has a chance to give you a larger magazine. It can roll with backup plan, auto-loading holster, and dragonfly in the last column as well. For the third column, you're looking at range finder, genesis, moving target, threat detector, rapid hit, and under pressure. Those are all of the sundial weapons that are earned from that activity. The normal version anyway, we don't know what's coming in the legend version, maybe some new heavy weapons or something. But now let's take a look at the two new season pass weapons from Season of Dawn. First is a 15 RPM rocket launcher called Pyroclastic Flow. It's unlocked at level 30 of the free track on the season pass. It can roll with cluster bombs, auto loading holster, moving target, and shield disorient. You're pretty much going to want to stay away from all of those perks except for cluster bombs. And it has a pretty mess set of perks in the third column. Ambitious Assassin, Underdog, Quick Draw, and Genesis. So yeah, it's, it's a rocket launcher. I didn't see anything about a rocket launcher buff in the patch notes, although Bungie did say they are aware that rocket launchers are kind of feeling mad right now. So I'm not sure this one will be seen around too much until that happens. This rocket also appears to have a curated role, not the greatest role with Volatile Launch, Alloy Casing, Ambitious Assassin, and Tap the Trigger. Woof, that's actually pretty bad. Not sure there was any curated versions of last season's Season Pass weapons, but if there was, keep an eye out for them again because that's a good amount of free cores. The more interesting of the two Season Pass weapons though is the 72 RPM Sniper Rifle Trophy Hunter, unlocked at rank 45 of the free track. Its final column can come with Vorpal Weapon, Dragonfly, Disruption Break, or Snapshot Sights. The third column also has Lead from Gold, Genesis, Pulse Monitor, and everyone's favorite, Triple Tap. This sniper also lists a curated version with Arrowhead Break, Accurized Rounds, Genesis, and Dragonfly, but I can say I'm absolutely going for that Snapshot and Lead from Gold Roll, or Snapshot and Triple Tap. Anytime I see a sniper with Snapshot, I'm like, I want it, I'm going to have it, I need to try this out in PvP. There's also a missing entry in the Season of Dawn Collections badge, take a guess what that might be. Yup, good old Perfect Paradox has been brought back in style for year 3. I assume this will be the reward for completing the Saint-14 mission next week, and it'll definitely be worth doing because this 140 RPM kinetic shotgun can roll with all of the following perks. For the last column, Rampage, Swashbuckler, Trench Barrel, Opening Shot, Eye of the Storm, and 1-2 Punch. Guys, this is like the mother of all shotguns right here, and a massive, massive upgrade from the Year 1 version, which only had Rampage, and that's it. In the third column, it can roll with Underdog, Demolitionist, Firmly Planted, Slide Shot, Field Prep, and Threat Detector. Certainly a respectable lineup of perks there. I'm not sure how we'll actually be able to grind for random rolls on this, but I can say for sure that I will not stop until I get my perfect, perfect Paradox PvE roll. As for the three Prophecy weapons that were updated, those are the Traveler's Judgment Sidearm, the Infinite Paths Pulse Rifle, and the Jack Queen King Hand Cannon. They appear to come from repeatable frames connected to the planetary obelisks. This might include the Sundial weapons as well, but we'll see as we spend more time in the season. For the Traveler's Judgment, which is an energy sidearm, in the last column it can roll with the following perks. Surrounded, Tap the Trigger, Head Seeker, Disruption Break, Dragonfly, and Shield Disorient. In the third column you've got Firmly Planted, Rapid Hit, Hip Fire Grip, Feeding Frenzy, Field Prep, and Auto Loading Holster. For the Energy Pulse Rifle Infinite Paths, the final column can roll with Swashbuckler, Zen Moment, Shield Disorient, Dragonfly, Eye of the Storm, and Opening Shot, with the third column containing Moving Target, Threat Detector, Auto Loading Holster, Grave Robber, Demolitionist, and Genesis. And lastly, Jack Queen King, the Energy Hand Cannon, comes with Snapshot Sights, Rampage, High Impact Reserves, Dragonfly, 
surrounded and swashbuckler in the last column with auto loading holster, pulse monitor, ambitious assassin, demolitionist, threat detector, and subsistence in the third column. So with the sundial weapons, you're looking at mostly kinetic and the prophecy weapons are mostly energy, so a fairly good mix of both energy and kinetic. However, it does seem that for another season, we're really lacking in the heavy weapon department. Only two heavy weapons out of all the ones I listed, and one of them is a rocket launcher. There are a few more year one heavies that were brought up to year three, although we do not know what weapons the Iron Banner is bringing this season, so there is still a chance for some more heavy weapons there. The ones I'm most excited to try out, besides Perfect Paradox, of course, are the Season Pass Sniper, and I'm also looking forward to seeing how that Linear Fusion performs with Firing Line after the Precision Damage buff. That could end up being quite the competitor in the Heavy slot, although I don't know how much I want to give up that 21% Delirium. I think the Fusion Rifle is going to be a lot of fun as well. I am definitely going to be hunting for a solid roll. There's a ton of damage perks to choose from on that, and I'm definitely interested in hunting for a solid roll on that Auto Rifle. As a PvE player, I've got my eyes on anything with those damage perks like Swashbuckler, Rampage, and of course the new perks, which I definitely want to try out. A few of them are based around the element you're running, or have some sort of synergy with your abilities, and I always look forward to those types of creative perks. Keep an eye out for all of the newly updated Year 1 weapons, even the ones I didn't list, which can drop from Legendary Engrams, and let me know in the comments which weapons you're looking forward to rocking the most. I'm going to get back to playing the game now. Thank you everyone for watching, and have a great day.